Well, let's speak with our guest tonight. He has been a member of the People's Democratic Party's Board of Trustees for 18 years. He once contested for the position of the national chairman of the party. He was a minister of police affairs and then President Goodluck Jonathan. He's had wide experience in politics. Mr. Adam Waziri is our guest tonight. He joins us live in our Abuja studio. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank, Thank you for joining us. I'd just like to show um, how your party has journeyed up to this point. And um, I'd like to break this down also for our guests, the candidates that your party has had since 1999. And first, we had Olusegun Obasanjo. Uh, who's from the south. Then we had uh, Umar Yaradua, the late uh, President Yaradua, who ruled for six, for three years, pardon me, he was a 2007 uh, candidate. Then, of course, former President Goodluck Jonathan, who was your uh, 2015 candidate, and of course a 2011 election. He had, well, five years to rule. And then finally we had um, Alahaji Atiku Abubakar, former Vice President, who lost, but he was your candidate last time. And a lot of people were thinking, haven't seen the trajectory. First the south, then the north, then south, then north. It would naturally come to the south for this 2023. So tell us, why did your party throw it open and by extension jettison zoning? Well, thank you. Uh, the fundamental reason for forming political parties is to get capture power through democratic means. That's the fundamental reason. Before now, people used to go to war to get power. But now it is democracy. And the PDP espouses this principle of attaining political power. So we don't talk of trajectory. We talk of a winning team. Because we don't want to be swayed from our ultimate objective. So it's like a case-by-case -case basis? Not really. Not really. Not really. The fundamental interest of the party is to capture political power. And that is the major input in our decision making. We are not asking for an aspirant or a candidate. We want ultimately our candidate to be the president of Nigeria. So. The trajectory there is incomplete, if I will use INEC, inconclusive. Because the tra trajectory doesn't make much sense unless you also put the timelines. You add up the figures, both in terms of tenure and in terms of what are the voting pattern. And the voting pattern and the tenure and so many considerations for the PDP is that we need to throw our ticket open. But why by that, by that, right. we are getting the best. Okay. So, I mean, you have been in the party for as long, so you understand this trajectory as it were. So let's go back in time, because you said you're not looking at trajectory per se you are you just want to get power and this you think is the winning formula so in 2011 uh, for example you had um, uh, former president Goodluck jonathan who at least took one year from the uh, term of a former president uh, late musa yardua and then he spent four years but in 2015 he was unopposed as it were but then the interesting thing is in 2019 your party <coughs> zoned to the north so why not continue with that trend? So you had South in 2015, zone to the North, who was unopposed in 2015, by the way, zone to the North 2019. Why not then zone to the South in 2023? Okay, your question has two parts. First, you return us to what I was saying, the timelines. We had a zoning everybody expects to last the tenure of the office that it was zone or the region, which would have been without natural intervention eight years. The presidency would have resided in the northern part of the country for eight years. But there was this force majeure, the intervention of death. And President Goodluck Jonathan came on board. I'm a beneficiary of his coming on board. He appointed me as a minister. And I want to disclose here 
that between me and him, I have had discussion with him that he is going to do one term, 2011 to 2015. And we went out with Professor Jerry Gana and so many people to converse that the ticket that brought President Jonathan to be vice president and eventually president should be concluded because it was a joint ticket. That is, President Jonathan should be allowed to continue the uncompleted tenure of President, late President Omar Adwa. So we elected him to continue that. So why was he allowed but to run on But the intervention, the disruption caused by President Jonathan to recontest in 2015 and the manipulation of the party guidelines such that only one form was printed. And interestingly, it was the same Professor Jerry Ghana that sort of made that announcement that, you know what, we have decided to just allow only President Goodluck Jonathan to run, and that was for the 2015 election. If you were doing the calculation naturally, it shouldn't have gone to President Goodluck Jonathan as a sole candidate. No, it should no, have no. gone to the North. No, 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 no. Please, we are operating a presidential system of government where the backstops on the table of the president. He is the first citizen of the country. In our case, between 2010 to 2015, the major beneficiary of that tenure was President Goodluck Jonathan. So there is a responsibility. If you have an authority, you also have a responsibility to ensure that the right thing is done. To recontest in 2015, to me, having had conversation with him is heresy. But the party allowed him to. Incumbency in Nigeria. Incumbency. That's why we are suffering the incumbency of the current administration. We have not reached a point where, where the party can rise up to an incumbent president. You know, uh, uh, lots of issues to raise, especially for, you know, political historians who, who have seen this trajectory, but more importantly for the future of our nation. We can talk about the history, but then we have a future uh, as a nation. I, I know that you have spoken uh, towards having this thing go to the north. Are you disappointed that it was thrown open? No, I have never spoken of regionalization. Never. So you didn't want this ticket to go to the No, north? no, no, no. No, 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 no. Okay. I want a Nigerian president. I want anybody aspiring to aspire to be a Nigerian president. None of the candidates goes to a region other than his own and say, I am here because I belong to that region. For example, let's say Longinos, just hypothetically, an aspirant called Longinos, going to Sokoto, he will not say that I am here aspiring to be president of Nigeria. Give me your votes because I belong to the Southeast. He will never do so. Neither will Atiku, who I support wholeheartedly, will go to Ibadan and say, because I am from North East and Adamawa State and Northerner, I want you to give me my votes. Nobody is saying so. In the comfort of their homes and on the privileged position of being in television stations, people come in and expound this thing and forget that we are a country that has been sharply divided by a maladministration that is looking for a Nigerian leader who can unite the country. Who will now market himself on the basis of first saving the country mm. before even the presidency will be useful? So I am looking for the best in the circumstances now. You know, I came across an interview you granted last year, it was published yes. last year, where you said, I, as an individual, will be in support that a presidential candidate must be from the North. This was an interview, so I'm quoting an, an your, your, yes. your, your words on that one. But, so you seem to be saying that it, from now henceforth, no more zoning for the PDP. It's competence henceforth. Is that what the position is? I have no, no power to say so. So it's, again, a case-by-case case basis. I have, I have no power to say so. I have no power. The problem when I come to interview, your interview is that you push words into my mouth. It was a question. <laughs> I didn't push words into your mouth. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. I am passionate about Nigeria, very passionate. I can't live anywhere outside Nigeria for one month. I can't. I have never done so. So I'm looking at any point in time for the best person to lead Nigeria. I supported 
General Obasanjo, mm. who I read the best president Nigeria have had since 1999. I've also worked for President Omar Arua, a friend of mine. May he's rest in peace. And worked for President Jonathan. Right. And supported him. Because it is an ethical for him to be told to step down after 10 months or 12 months on the seat and allows, look, no, allows because of our time up. we have just less than a minute it's always quite interesting having this conversation with you really but i'd like you to speak to this in less than a minute yes. as we wind down because there have been agitations both within and outside your party saying this should go to the southeast do you think the southeast has a chance with this arrangement um i am a member of the two zoning committees set up by the party one to zone the party offices and one to talk about the presidency. I stand by that decision. They were all unanimous. So the Southeast has a chance in this the, It was all unanimous. No, no, I'm saying the best from the Southeast should compete with the best from the Southwest, with the best from the North, uh, Northeast or North or whatever you call it. And there will be 4,000 and 5, 4,000 and 4,500 delegates that should be given the unfettered atmosphere to choose who they think be the candidate of the party with a desire that we must save Nigeria from extinction. And that's a goal for your party? Yes. <sighs> well, we have to anchor at this point, but quite an interesting topic. I'd like to thank you so much. We've been speaking with Alaji Adamu Waziri, who is a member of the People's Democratic Party's Board of Trustees. Thank you for your time tonight. Well, that's our package for tonight, but the political scene keeps getting interesting. Now, we'll be back tomorrow again to give you a fresh perspective. So stay with Channels Television, where you're home for the news. I'm Kyle Okikulu. To have a great night. Bye.